In this last section, we will cover some of the major findings revealed during the sequencing of the human genome and preview the processes of transcription and translation that will be covered in detail later. In humans, each cell normally contains 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. 22 of these pairs, called autosomes, look the same in both males and females, and they are also copies of one another. The 23rd pair of the sex chromosomes differ between males and females. Females have two copies of the X chromosome, while males have one X and one Y chromosome. Each species has a unique chromosomal complement. For example, chickens have 39 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 78, with 38 autosomal pairs and one pair of sex chromosomes, Z and W. In this species, ZW chickens are female and ZZ chickens are male. The total length of the human genome is over 3 billion base pairs long. This measurement also includes the mitochondrial DNA. Amazingly, of the 3 billion bases of code, only about 2% encode for proteins. So what's all this extra genome doing? About 26% of the sequence contain intron sequences between the coding regions or exons of the genes. As we will see, the intron sequences are transcribed with the messenger RNA during protein expression. However, they are spliced out of the exon reading frame prior to protein translation. Somewhere between 8 and 20% of the genome is used for regulation and fine-tuning of protein expression. A small part of the genome, such as telomeres, play a structural role in the molecule and other types of non-coding RNA are also transcribed. About 50% of the genome contains repetitive sequences. These include short and long interspersed nuclear elements, signs and lines respectively, which are known as transposable elements. Transposable elements, or TEs, are DNA sequences that have the ability to change their position within a genome. As a result of their deep evolutionary origins and continuous diversification, TEs come in a bewildering variety of forms and shapes. TEs can be divided into two major classes based on their mechanism of transposition, and each class can be further divided into subclasses based on their mechanism of chromosomal integration. Class I elements are known as retrotransposons and they mobilize through a copy-paste mechanism whereby an RNA intermediate is reverse transcribed into a cDNA copy that is integrated elsewhere in the genome. Class II are known as DNA transposons, are mobilized via a DNA intermediate either directly through a cut and paste mechanism or in the case of helitron, a peel and paste replicative mechanism involving a circular DNA intermediate. Historically, little attention has been given to transposition in somatic cells and its consequences because somatic transposition may be viewed as an evolutionary dead end for the TE with no long-term consequences for the host species. Yet there is abundant evidence that TEs are active in somatic cells in many organisms. There are thoughts that they may play a role in processes like the diversification of neuronal cells or in early embryonic development. There is also evidence that transposon activity can be quite high in disease states such as cancer. Thus, more needs to be learned about these processes. Sequencing of the human genome has enabled us to learn more about the structure of genes or sequences of DNA or RNA the code for a molecule that has a function. The process of transcription leads to the production of an RNA molecule from a DNA template. The open reading frame of a gene is usually represented as an arrow, indicating the direction in which the sense strand is read. An RNA polymerase enzyme will actually bind to the template strand of the DNA rather than to the sense strand, and it will produce an RNA molecule that looks like a copy of the sense strand. 
and is oriented in the same 5 prime to 3 prime direction as the open reading frame. Regulatory sequences are located at the extremities of the gene. These sequence regions can either be next to the transcribed region, where they're called the promoter, or separated by many kilobases, where they're called enhancers or silencers. The promoter is located at the 5 prime end of the open reading frame and is composed of a core promoter sequence and the proximal promoter sequence. The core marks the start for transcription by binding RNA polymerase and other proteins necessary for copying DNA to RNA. The proximal promoter region binds transcription factors, then modify the affinity of the core promoter for the RNA polymerase. Genes may be regulated by multiple enhancer or silencer regions that might be located many thousands of base pairs away. The binding of different transcription factors, therefore, regulates the rates of transcription initiation at different times and in different cells. A key feature of eukaryotic genes is that their transcripts are typically subdivided into exons and introns. Exon regions are the coding regions of the messenger RNA and are retained in the final and mature messenger RNA, while the introns are non-coding and are spliced out or excised during post-transcriptional processing. Indeed, the intron regions of a gene can be considerably longer than the exon regions, notably making up 26% of the overall genome. Once they are spliced together, exons form a single continuous protein coding region, and the splice boundaries are no longer detectable. Eukaryotic post-transcriptional processing also adds a 5' prime cap and a poly A tail, to the end of the messenger RNA. These additions stabilize the messenger RNA and direct its transport from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, where it can undergo the translation process and the production of the protein. The overall organization of prokaryotic genes is markedly different from that of the eukaryotic cells. The most obvious difference is that prokaryotic open reading frames are often grouped together into a structure that is called a polycystronic operon, which is under the control of a set of shared regulatory sequences. These ORFs are all transcribed as a single messenger RNA molecule. Some operons also display translational coupling and will be translated together. The operator switch next to the promoter is the main regulatory element in prokaryotic cells. Repressor proteins bound to the operator may physically block the promoter in the association of the RNA polymerase enzyme, preventing transcription. Riboswitches are another important regulatory sequence commonly present in prokaryotic untranslated regions. These sequences switch between alternative secondary structures in the RNA depending on the concentration of key metabolites. The secondary structure can either block or reveal important sequence regions such as ribosomal binding sites, RBSs. Introns are extremely rare in prokaryotes and therefore do not play a significant role in prokaryotic gene regulation. So even though coding sequences only make up 2% of the human genome, this leads to the production of over 46,000 proteins and another 2,300 microRNA molecules. Thus, in biochemistry, we have a lot to learn. This class really only brushes the surface. We will spend the rest of the term learning about the function of proteins and the processes regulating gene expression.